So, it's March 2018, and we just had a crazy flu season, and they are claiming people were dying from the flu virus overnight. And I thought, well, no, 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 maybe secondary of infections back in 1918 when they did not have antibiotics, but how is, is that happening? So I started to look at the drugs they use to get people when they first show up at the doctor's office, and the first thing they give them are, turns out to be, phenol products. I couldn't believe it. This takes me right back to the story of how they make vaccines. If you look at my video number eight, the chemicals in vaccines, you have this very same chart, starting with cold tar, and the creosote gets turned into phenol, and um, <laughs> this is used to kill bacteria for the vaccines or kill the cells that are containing the viruses. And then from also, they use at this branch, going this way towards the fuels, you have a synth synthesis gas, um, syngas they call it for short, and it becomes methanol, and you get formaldehyde, and, and formaldehyde is, is also used to kill bacteria because it cross-links the proteins and to ding virus capsids um, and supposedly cripple them. So I was like, wow, they're using these same very... Uh, incredibly toxic products um, as the medicine to reduce inflammation and to kill pain. Of course it kills pain because that's what the phenol does. Phenol is astonishing. It denatures proteins. Uh, what does that mean? Here's three molecules of a protein, of a tissue, all bound together. And to denature means to uh, separate them, to blow them apart it explodes cells. That's how it kills the bacteria for vaccines. It will explode the cells to release viruses. Um, today they use it to extract DNA. Um, and it does an explosion on the, the our, our nervous system. So less than 5% phenol, you're denaturing the axon. Here is an axon, here's the dendrites, um, these are the ears, the many ears of the cell, and then the one voice, the axon. And it is not working so well. It is a sensory block. You get greater than 5% phenol, and now you're damaging the neuron to the point it doesn't feel anything. So it's a neuron block. It's a motor block. It's, it's demyelinating, which is the insulation to allow current. There's current, no more current. If there is no insulation, there is no current. Um, um, because there's going to be uh, all kinds of problems with that going on. So, so um, they've discovered recently that this also means that when you're tampering with the sensitivities of the immune system, you're also blocking emotions. Wow. And this means um, not to get excited about anything, much less interested. So there's three categories um, that really fall into, three types that fall into two categories. Um, you have the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, of which salicylates aspirin is the first thing they came out with in 1897. Um, and also the ibuprofens. Um, they are NSAIDs also. And they are known as phenol, phenol, phenol. These are all phenol products. I have also written their chemist, uh, chemical name so we can keep track of what's going on here. This phenol has been carboxylated. It's been turned into a polymer and a plastic because you must realize that this is where we got our first synthetic our first synthetic products, our first plastics. We discovered in 1909 that if you combine uh, phenol and formaldehyde, you will get Bakelite. And Bakelite was the first plastic. So, um, this is a way... Uh, so, this is a, a polymerization of the, um, of the phenol uh, does not belong in the body uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, as they discovered, it is a way to to not only be a sensory block, but also motor block and um, a, a, a thing they use for ex execution often, because only a small amount will do the job. Um, the ibuprofen 
is made from phenyl and butane, as you can see in this chart here. Butane comes from the syngas of the methanol to gasoline to butane. And um, the, the two of them cause, it, it will stop prostaglandins from working. See? NSADs. And then NISADs will stop the prostaglandins from working. They will uh, stop the blood from clotting. They will stop the neutrophils, which are the first responders when there is an infection. So if one has more than just muscle pain for some reason, or, or they, and they actually have an infection, they're going to be in trouble because it's inhibiting their immune system functioning. Um, these, it's also causing high blood pressure. These two, this category of aspirins and um, ibuprofen will damage the kidneys. It causes, they, they admittedly, uh, they admit that it causes 200,000 deaths a year in the United States from mistakes damaging excretion organs and causing a little too much of a motor block there. Um, the third category is much stronger, acetaminophens. It is a nitrophenol, and as you can see in the chemical formula, they have added nitrogen to it. Um, and by just, the H is a nine, you have nine atoms of hydrogen. If you just reduce the formula to seven, just by two atoms of hydrogen, you now get NAPKI. And NAPKI is the toxic byproduct of acetaminophen, as you can well find out all about it. And um, they say they don't know how it works, but it is the leading cause of liver failure in the world and hospitalizations. Um, the lethal dose for acetaminophen is 20 grams for an adult. The so ibuprofen is 6 grams and the salicylates 10 grams. These are very toxic. So the phenomenon for me is the very same um, synthetic um, chemicals that they use to make um, vaccines, used for vaccines, are the same drugs that they're using to supposedly be medicine for people and they're obviously dangerous for life because that's why they're used in the manner they're used to make the vaccines. These should not be used lightly. Um, they, they definitely must be looked at. Thank you.